So today we're going to talk about real mowers. I'm going to go over my three rules for real mowers. We're going to talk about value versus price and I'm going to give you some inside scoop or some news and talk about the 2022 real mower season and why you need to start to make plans if you're going to buy one. So hold on one sec. Morning. I'm actually going to go up to the very, very top of our beach house and that's where I'm going to talk to you today because We've got a lot of projects going on and man, it's just too busy around here. So I'm gonna go up top, we'll talk. <laughs> I am here at the top of the world. What's kind of cool is we're sitting up in this turret. This is an all glass room up here. And I'm sitting here, I'm looking at the ocean that's over here. The inlet is over here, the lighthouse is over here. It's just a really cool place. I thought I'd just come up here because there's a lot going on downstairs. I got trash trucks and everything else and this is a nice quiet place to talk. So why not? So before I begin, real quick, um, I'm going to be talking about real mowers, and of course, I'm going to show, tell you my recommendation. I link to it in the description below. There is a page, and on that page, you're going to find links to the new lawn guides, and you're going to find links to the real mower, and you're going to find links to just about everything else. So I put one link. It'll take you to our website. That's where everything is. Number two, the new lawn guides are out. This year, we decided to go ahead and do lawn guides for just about everything. We have a Bermuda lawn guide, we have a Zoysia lawn guide, and a cool season grass lawn guide, which covers fescues, rise, and Kentucky bluegrass. They all have calendars, and they all have their own websites. Go to freelawncareguide.com. That's the best place to go. When you go there, it'll have a link to the Bermuda at the top, a link to the Zoysia, and then the cool season grasses are actually on that page, on that website down below. Got it? So make sure you go there and of course hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss this beautiful face. First, let's talk about who uses a real mower. The only person that really would not want to use a real mower are cool season grass people that keep their grass at normal height. So if you have a cool season grass that's, you know, let's say two and a half, three or even four inches tall in the, in the winter time, in the summertime, Real mowers don't perform well then because for a real mower to really perform well, it needs a front roller. When a front roller goes over that tall grass, it doesn't have enough bounce back to get cut in the blades. Got it? So most people, especially warm season guys that like to keep their grass short, are going to be using real mowers. There is a growing crowd of people, obviously, that are lawn freaks that want sh uh, cool season grass, but they want to keep it really short. So maybe they have a Kentucky bluegrass or a rye grass, and they want to keep it at three quarters of an inch or one inch. When you get that low, you almost have to have a real mower. But you need to understand, if you have long, cool season grass, when the reel goes over it, it's kind of not going to want to bounce back and not going to get cut. So you need to use a rotary. But for everybody else, pretty much real mower is a great way to go. The average homeowner... This video really is for the average homeowner that's thinking about going in and starting real mowers. In other words, they're saying, well, I want to get my grass lower, get my grass lower, but I have a riding lawnmower and it just scalps it. I have a push rotary or whatever I have and it's just not doing a good job. So first, let's go over the rules. I'm going to cover rules. We're going to talk about price versus value and we're going to talk about rumors in the supply chain issue. We'll cover that too. So what are my rules? Number one rule, wider is better. Plain and simple, there is no way around it. The wider the real mower that you use, the better the cut on the grass is gonna be. I have a small 4,000 square foot zoysia lawn down at the beach house and I ordered a 25. I would not use, I will never go back down to a 20 inch real mower again in my life after using a 25. Why is that? It's because every lawn, no matter how much you level, is gonna have a little bit of imperfection to it. And I like to, I like to, I like to expand. I like to go to the extremes when we do this. So let me put up a lawn that has a little bit of a of dip inside of it. If I were to use a small 20-inch reel mower, that reel mower is going to feel and follow those dips more so than if I put up a big 25-inch. The 25-inch. So let me, so if I were, let's let's expand this a lot. Let's use a 12-inch reel mower versus a five foot reel mower. If I put a 12 inch on that same lawn, it would be following all those little things where a five foot one would just go straight across and ignore all those little divots. Got it? That's where it really comes into play. The wider, the smoother the cut. When we start to go down and use some of what we have, a, we still have a, a one or two 20 inch gas powered reel mowers. When we start to use those, we really start to see the difference. We have more reel mar uh, wheel marks in the lawn and we start to see that little variation in the cuts. So rule number one, I say is 25 inch or above. That's just my rule. 
What's the next rule? The next rule is backlap. You have to be able to backlap yourself. Look, we're cutting. When you start to get down low on grass, you may be cutting during the peak growing season every 48 hours if you want to keep it really low. And if you're doing that much cutting, now we're cutting, you know, three lawns, three or four lawns we're taking care of. We have to backlap almost every month. The average homeowner will probably backlap once to twice a cutting season. And you have to be able to backlap yourself. I, I'm not going to buy a, a real mower that I got to take the reel out and send it off and have a factory sharpen the blades for me while I'm sitting here for two or three weeks waiting for, and I can't cut my grass. So my suggestion, my rule number two is make sure you have a real mower that the manufacturer allows you to do a backlap without avoiding the warranty. Number three, I need to be able to work on it. I'm not a mechanic. I'm just like the average homeowner. I know a little bit about engines. I know a little bit about mechanical stuff, but I'm not a mechanic. So I want to be able to know that if a part breaks on my lawnmower, I can order a part, bring it in and put it on myself. With a couple of these units, you can actually do that. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but you can actually work on it yourself and replace stuff. You can even replace the reel. You can replace the bearings. It's real simple. So it's e I want something that's easy to work. On. Okay. So now let's talk about the price thing. Let's talk about, and I'm, when I talk about this, I'm not going to talk about what's the best reel mower. I mean, that's always subjective. And of course, the best ones are always going to be the most expensive, what I'm talking about is value because here's the problem. I'm dealing with the average homeowner and the average homeowner is spending $200 to $800 on maybe a push rotary or maybe a riding lawnmower. Maybe they spent $1,400, whatever it is. It's a real tough leap to start to go up close to $2,000 for a real mower and even tougher to go up to $3,000 or above for a real mower. That's a big leap and that's why... I really like the sweet spot. I think the sweet spot transition is going to be about $2,000 delivered to your house is the sweet spot. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because if you apply all the rules, McLean is the winner there too, because you can get a 25 inch wide reel mower. It's 1900 bucks plus shipping. I think they just build it in. So to your door is about 2200 bucks for a 25 inch Honda engine with a groove front roller on it. That's everything. Make sure you remember that because we're going to talk about some other ones here. Um, True Cut. True Cut has a 20 and then they really go up to their 27. The 27 is a big, huge machine. It has massive wheels on the back. It weighs 100 pounds more than the 25 inch that I'm talking about. Um, I have, I have, a, uh, you guys know that I have a 20, I have a 27 inch True Cut. And I only pull it out when I'm doing stuff like really scalping or some hard work. For daily cutting, we just really don't like to use it. The McLeans are so much lighter and so much nicer to use. But the McLean and the True Cut fall into the Chevy and Ford sort of category. They're sort of those really well-built, old-style, clunky sort of machines that haven't changed in so many years. Now let's move into the Mercedes and the, and the BMW category. <laughs> I like to say that because the Swardman... And the Alette are probably two good examples of European designed and produced real mowers that are really, really high quality units. But let me give you an example. The largest Swordman that you can get in the consumer class is 22 inches. Now they make an electric and a gas. The electric one with shipping runs about $3,900. It's almost four grand. The 22-inch Swardman um, gas with shipping is about 3200 at your door. That's a big step up. It's a big step up for units that are probably going to cut about the same. The Alette, Alette, beautiful unit, European design and made. Um, the gas model, they only have in the consumer class, they only go up to 20 inches wide, though. That's one of my, it breaks my rule. And the gas one is about... Eh, 3500 to 3700 shipped to your door. So you can see what I mean. Um, that McLean sweet spot is such a good sweet spot for a unit. I can almost buy two McLeans for what I pay for something like one of the other ones when I go up there. As a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why that's one of the reasons why I got a McLean because if I ever had to replace it or if I needed a backup, they're just they're just not that expensive when you look at wide gas powered real mowers.
So that's the value wise. That's the pricing where they stand. Let's talk real quick about um, the 2022 rumor mill and what's going on. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest thing that is starting to impact the real mower industry is the shortage of Honda motors. This is something that people are starting to find out that the Honda motors that they're using on most of these units are pretty much now out of stock and they will not have more available until the summer of 2022. So if you don't have a company that has been planning on this, they're going to be short on engines. Even with Briggs, even Briggs and Stratton, you're going to start to see that become into an issue where they can't really get enough of those engines. Fortunately, the good thing is, is that true, uh, excuse me, McLean, I talked to the distributor down there and what he's been doing very intelligently is he has been stockpiling mowers and buying them, buying them to carry them, hopefully carry them through the point where those, those actual engines are available more. Now let's talk about true cut. This is kind of rumor mill, but I've gotten kind of verification on this. And that is that true cut has sold its business to another company and they're going to be moving their facility, shut down their California facility, and the new company is going to move it somewhere in the Midwest. The, what's the problem with that? Well, you have this big gap in manufacturing and there are they are not producing any parts. So there is going to be a part shortage for True Cuts. They're not fabricating parts and they probably won't be fabricating parts for a while they're going to be go right back into trying to produce the actual lawnmowers so i don't know i don't know the new company um, i don't know anything about this other than the fact that true cut is shutting down the business has been sold is the way that i understand it and the new company is going to move it to the midwest but man you've got a pretty big gap in there as far as supply issues so just be aware of that i just want to let you know that um, Swardman, it looks like Swardman has dropped all of its U.S. distributors except for one. And I don't know why. I don't know why that is. Man, that kind of scares me. It scares me when the company that is a European-produced product drops its distributors down to only one. <laughs> Maybe they can handle all the parts, service, and everything, but I don't know. That's only one distributor that I know of that they have in the U.S., but again, great product. I just don't know if that strategy, I don't know if that um, strategy is actually going to work, especially in this market where we have so many supply chain issues. Um, Alette, I don't know about Alette. Alette seems to be doing fine. Um, I looked at their distributor. One of their distributors is in South Carolina, and they seem to be doing fine. I don't have any, I don't know of any issues with them whatsoever, other than probably they may run into the same thing with Honda engine shortages, just about what everyone does. So when it comes to a real mower, again, when we start to, if you want to properly cut your Bermuda grass and your zoysia grass and your warm season grasses, they like to be one half inch to maybe one and a half inches tall. That's the sweet spot for warm season grasses. To cut it that low, you almost have to start to go into a real mower. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of that scalping. So now the average person is saying, well, I can go to real mower, but man, they're expensive. Yeah, they are expensive. They really start to get expensive. The push lawn mowers just don't work that well. We've tried them, we've used them, and the push ones, and uh, they now they make some electric ones. Man, when you're out there cutting a lot of this thick Bermuda grass, it's just not going to get it. So you really need to go with a gas or I guess maybe an electric one too. But really for gas is the main thing we're doing. For your cool season guys, if you are in that range, that long range where you're at two and a half, three, even four inches tall, you guys aren't going to want to use a real mower. You guys are going to use a rotary mower. As a matter of fact, I did a video a few, uh, a month or two ago. I just, I reviewed that Honda that I got. It's a really good lawnmower. I recommend that you can look for that video. I want to make sure you guys understand that in the new lawn guide too, we have a new jumpstart program. So the jumpstart program, which is your pre-season, which starts about the time that you put down your spring pre-emergent. So for us, that's going to be probably late February, early March is when we're going to do our pre-emergent treatment and we're going to start our jumpstart program. So that's in the new lawn guides and it's in the new calendars. 
So understand, now that's for all grasses. You can do this Jumpstart program. And then those calendars walk you through the year, sort of when you are going to be putting stuff down and what you're going to need to do. So I hope this video has helped talking about real mowers. Let me tell you what's coming up. I got to stain this back fence. We're going to do that. I'm going to do a year and a half later review on mattresses in a box. Remember the mattresses in a box that I reviewed? And we, had, we got one for our master bedroom, our guest bedroom, and we got one down here for the beach house. Well, we decided to change out um, the, the guest bedroom from a queen to a king. So tomorrow, we're going to have a new king set come in along with the mattress in a box, and I'll review it, and I'll tell you about a year and a half later. What else have I got? I got a bunch of different stuff that I'm going to be doing for you guys. Hopefully, I'll be able to put out some more videos. Hit subscribe and uh, enjoy the talk. Talk to you later. Talk.